So this is a AC and DC coupled system. It's composed of Victron and Fronius sources for both charging and also for the Victron inverter for supplying loads. Now this is the Victron Quattro. Uh, it comes at a range of sizes. Uh, this is the 5000 VA unit, 48 volts. And uh, at the moment, it's if I look at the color controller here, it's 98% charged. That's the batteries behind me. So these are the, the simplified batteries. Uh, if I stand back a bit, uh, these are the simplified batteries, which are a lithium ferrophosphate. Each one is uh, 3.4 kilowatt hours of energy. So I've got approximately 10 kilowatt hours of energy uh, in these three batteries here. And uh, that's supplying this inverter with DC power then the inverter then can create a stable AC grid. Now to this AC grid, if you look over my shoulder, down the back here is a Fronius inverter. This is a single phase Fronius inverter because it's a single phase battery inverter. That Fronius inverter supplies the same switchboard to which this Victron inverter is connected. And therefore it can share energy. The, the surplus generation that's not being used on that switchboard coming from the Fronius inverter will then be um, taken by the Quattro to charge the batteries. So that's AC coupling. But, and I did say we could do both, we've also, if you look over my shoulder here, 
we've got an, a Victron MPPT. Now this Victron MPPT here takes DC from another array, not the same array as the Fronius is connected to, and directly charges the batteries behind me. Uh, so that's a DC coupled solution. Why have I got both? Well, I guess it's from a reliability point of view, it's nice to have another way of charging a battery. Also, DC is a very smooth way of charging a battery. Uh, there's no ripple imposed from rectifying AC, so that's kind of nice. But probably the biggest reason for it is what they call black start protection. Now, black start protection is kind of if all things go wrong, such as your backup generator fails to start, it's run out of fuel, uh, you haven't done any maintenance on a while and it cranks three times and doesn't auto start, uh, it's broken down completely, it's not there. Any of those reasons and more could explain why your backup generator isn't going to come online and charge your batteries. So the Victron inverter, once the batteries get to a certain level, so once the Quattros see a certain trigger point, it'll shut down to protect the battery system. And once this inverter shuts down, there is no AC network. And that means that even though you know, let's say this happens at night time, in the morning the sun comes up and the sun shines on the solar panels to which the Fronius inverter is connected to, nothing happens. Because the Fronius inverter needs a frequency and voltage to synchronize to. It needs this to be on. Now, this is where the black start protection comes in. The DC coupled charging source, the Victron MPPT here, it's just going to charge. It's going to charge this battery behind me. It doesn't need the inverter. It's a direct connection between the MPVT and the battery. And therefore, bingo, the battery gets charged in the morning. The battery volts rises. The Quattro sees a useful uh, battery voltage, turns back on, re-energizes the AC network, and then the Fronius inverter synchronizes with it, and we're back to, to uh, normal operation. And that's all without any intervention from the system operator. So yeah, black star protection is one of those reasons. The other is just adding more generation. You may have reached the capacity that you can charge a battery. Let's say this has got ability to charge at 70 amps. And so you've got enough AC power coming in from your AC coupled inverters to create 70 amps of charge current. You can't add any more because they're just gonna limit to 70 amps, but you can DC couple which is an independent way of charging that battery system more, as long as the batteries are capable of accepting that extra current. So there's a couple of conditions there. You've got to find out what the maximum charge current of your battery system is, but uh, it does mean you can expand on the DC coupled side if you hit your limits on the AC coupled side. Now, lastly, I wanted to point to uh, these two things behind me, the color controller and the link system. The color controller, um, I just rave about it. It is my favorite interface. Now, there's a whole range now of GX devices, some with built-in screens. Some of them use a, um, the app on your phone using Victron Connect, and some use an HDMI port, so you can plug in an HDMI screen, whether it's a touchscreen. Um, Victron Supply, an optional touchscreen, which is about the same size as this, slightly bigger, um, for the Serbo GX. Or you might supply your own HDMI interface uh, for a screen. But what I really love about it is the intuitiveness of the display. You don't have to be an electrical engineer or a geek to understand where the energy is going. There's little moving dots, and I really like that. I mean, the number of times I've looked at an inverter and it says, charge current minus 100 amps and I go is minus charging or is minus discharging I don't know and there isn't any convention it sort of depends on which perspective you're looking at it from whether you're from the inverter side or the or the battery side but when you see dots moving they give you a sense of um, direction of current flow um, it's colorful that's a plus the fact that the battery state of charge actually is like water filling up a green battery. The battery's green and it fills up from the bottom. So you can just see by how much uh, volume there is on the battery what the state of charge is. Uh, it can synchronize with other charging sources so it can see the solar charge, um, uh, the DC coupled and the AC coupled uh, as charging sources. And I've got a wind turbine, a very small 200 watt ARX on the roof here, and it comes up as a DC power source as well. So I can see all the DC coupled um, uh, uh, loads as well as generation. And all of the lights that are on the symbol for the inverter replicate the actual lights on the actual inverter. So 
if this was in a house and this is out in a shed, I'd actually know what the inverter's doing. I'd know whether it was in bypass, whether it was inverting, whether the mains was on or whether the, the, the backup generator is running. You can even, by changing this interface, um, use it as a generator start function. So um, where you've got a, a button here, look, generator start. So you can do a virtual start option. Um, sorry, I should press that button. Uh, you can do a virtual start straight from the screen. So that's really, really nice. But I guess I like this one here. Uh, it gives me values as well. So it's all very well to you know pretty pictures, but if you look inside those pretty pictures, there's actual values. So I can see that the battery system's at 98%. It's charging at an enormous 16 watts because it's full. Uh, it's at 53.3 volts. Um, and I can see the amount coming in from the microgrid, that's 30 watts, and how much the loads are consuming now, which is 542 watts. So yeah, really nice. And last of all, it doesn't look super exciting, but this here is a great way of connecting uh, a lot of sources and um, storage on the DC side. These are basic, it's a system called Lynx, and there's Lynx In, Lynx Shunt, and Lynx Distributor. Lynx In is where all the batteries connect. So I've got these three batteries connected by three separate cables onto three uh, lugs within this unit. And this can take up to a thousand amps. So if I had more than, well, it's got four ports, I've had more than four batteries, I can expand off the bottom here and plug in another Lynx because this Lynx power in actually has female and male ends to it. You plug them in, put the bolts in, and now you've got a bus bar that you're building at a capacity of up to a thousand amps. So that's really nice. The Lynx shunt is a thousand amp smart shunt. It converts from DC or analog to digital and transmits the information to the color controller or other GX devices so that you can see the amount of energy flow uh, between the batteries and all sources of generation and load. The distributor is where you connect inverters and other generation sources on the DC side like our wind turbine. And so uh, it's sitting up here and it too can be plugged together. So um, this system is very cost effective. If you were to build a, a bus bar system like this, you'd probably spend more than just buying this beautiful unit. And it can even have integrated fusing as well built in. So monitored fuses, uh, which is a really nice feature because it's a requirement of our new battery standard, ASN ZS5139, to have string over current protection in a parallel battery system. We have more than one battery uh, string in parallel. So there you go. This is the AC and DC coupled Victron, Fronius and Simplify uh, system here at the lab. Now there's one other thing I wanted to cover, which is it's not either or. It's not AC coupling or DC coupling. Actually, you can have them both. In fact, having them both is kind of like having the best of both worlds. Uh, you can get all the pros of AC coupling. And as I mentioned, things like it can be scaled easily. Uh, it doesn't have to be co-located. Uh, it's more efficient for daytime energy use. And you can get all the pros of DC coupling, which is it's a dedicated way of charging a battery independent of any inverter. So it doesn't matter if the inverters are off, it'll still charge its battery. It's very high efficiency uh, for energy use at nighttime. And uh, it's kind of like a second leg to your design. You're not totally reliant on one generation system. You, you probably would have a backup generator too for off-grid, but uh, you know, having DC coupling and AC coupling makes for a very reliable system. So let's have a look at putting it all together. AC coupled, DC coupled on one off-grid system.